The other course that I built recently that I'm pretty excited about is a new introductory course on the internet. So this is a course designed for freshmen or people who are curious about computer science. It is not a technical course in that there's not a lot of it's sort of heavy technical content. We don't teach programming. We do introduce students to a bunch of different uh, environments and give them some command line experience and sort of like sneakily introduce them to some useful things like Git and web development. Um, but this is not an intro programming class. Uh, so uh, the website for the class is internetclass.org. The, the class is designed to be used in a flipped format. So the way that this works is students first come to this website, they log in, uh, let me use my, let's see, that's right. Um, and then what they're presented with is this sort of work list of videos that they need to watch. And the site enforces that they watch videos in a specific order and that they watch the videos before various deadlines. Now my account is way behind. I don't need to watch the videos. Um, but you know, they would they would come here, this would say, you know, what's a router? They would start watching the video about what's a router where I'm explaining it to them. Uh, the online tools are nice in that they prevent students from skipping around uh, on the first first go through. Students can't mute the video, we check for that as well. Um, you know, if I cover the video with another tab, like I don't want to watch it right now, I want to do something else, we can detect that. So we do some simple things to try to encourage students to, to stay on task. Um, and the sort of the, the, the tab here has the deadlines clearly marked. So these were due back in September. Again, I'm way behind. Um, and, and this is what students do before they come to class. So every week we have about, um, I'm going to go look at the playlist. Every week we assign about maybe 20 or um, 20 videos total split into two deadlines. So at this point, I've recorded about 300 videos on different topics. So you can see they're organized into playlists. Um, we started with the week on internet era, then we did connectivity protocols, routing, transport, naming, the web, search, security, identity, the interactive web, mobility, and your brain on the internet. And we have a few more weeks that we still have to record. Um, so the, the full playlist here, I think, again, has about 300 videos in it. They're all designed to be about five minutes. And so uh, the total content that students are exposed to in a week is about the same amount that you would get in lecture. But we're not lecturing during class. Then during class time, uh, what students, what we're doing are a series of activities with students. Uh, and so let's see here. Let me zoom in a little bit uh, down the information area. I wonder if I can move this. Guess not. Yeah, so let me uh, give you an example. Uh, we did, here we go. So we did a, a Wireshark activity. The activities are distributed as Google Docs. Uh, students get these before class. Um, in an email, we put them into random groups, and then they come prepared uh, to go over activities like this in class. We've been doing a number of different activities that involve a virtual machine. That gives students the ability to experiment with tools like Wireshark that might be difficult to install on a Windows machine or, or difficult to use in some other way. Um, and so, you know, and so this is an experiment in, in a certain style of flipped classroom. There's lots of better things that we can do with the videos, but the goal in video, building up this video library in the way that we've done it is to build it up over time so that the video library is larger, encompasses many more aspects of the internet, including advanced topics that students might see as optional material, and then also has a lot more redundancy built into it. So for each concept, so for example, if I go, Let's see, I go over here. Um, you know, I recorded a video on what is store and forward routing. I would like to be able to find two or three other people to record similar videos on that trying to explain the same topic. And then if students are confused, I can use those videos as backup. In other cases, what we're doing this year is we're actually having students contribute their own videos into the class. So there are three video assignments that are part of the course. Students are recording their own videos on these topics, submitting them to the staff. They get graded, and then the really, really good ones we're going to pull back into uh, to the course material. Let me give you an example of a case where we actually did have a little bit 
of uh, redundancy in the system just to give you a sense of how this works. So here is an example where both me and a colleague, Murat Demirbash, recorded a video on peer-to-peer -peer systems. And so when students arrive at this page right now, they're randomly selected to watch either my explanation or Murat's explanation. But in the future, what we want to do is use more intelligence and data from prior years to make good choices for each student. The choices could be just based on the overall goodness of the video, but in certain cases, maybe certain students respond better to certain presenters or certain explanations. And we can learn, detect that, and try to steer them to the video that's the best fit to begin with. So this has been an exciting project. By moving the lecture videos online, we can bring students together to do activities in groups. So for the class, uh, today we have 210 students in this cafeteria space. Uh, today they're working on an activity that's allowing them to learn JavaScript. We put them into new groups on a week-by-week -week basis. Uh, groups are assigned to tables using this magical seating chart that we put together. Um, students come here, they find the group, they get to work. The nice thing about moving the homework into the class is that students are able to be supervised by course staff. You can see the UTAs on their feet milling around, helping students, making sure they stay on task, encouraging them as they go through the activity. Um, it also allows us to change um, the expectations for homework a little bit. So if we give out an assignment an activity that's a little bit underspecified, that's okay. The TAs can encourage students to look for answers online and to sort of help encourage them to become more self-reliant and less uh, dependent on really accurate write-ups and activities. So this is the model for the class. Rather than lecturing, move the videos online, bring students here uh, to this cafeteria space. We have 210 in here and there's about another uh, 150 in the other room over here. And this space is something we found by accident, but works out very well.